but like it's just every single time I go like, hello, how are you doing? I am doing great. <laughs> it is. My name's Monish, and I'm your main host. Welcome to Real Talk. Welcome to season two. Now, imagine you're in a new city. You graduated, you gave mom the, don't worry mom, I'm gonna get a job speech, and then you hop into your new apartment with no friends to talk to, and basically nothing to do. Plus, somehow you're always three seconds away from getting hit by a taxi. Hey, I'm walking here, I'm walking here, up your shoes, son of a bitch, you don't talk me that way, get out of here. You're at ground zero. You have no friends. This podcast is deconstructing exactly how to do that and how to make friends. And Army, somehow, our co-host, magically has direct experience doing just that. Here's episode 14, season 2. All right, so this is the first time that we have a podcast <clears throat> where Army actually knows more than us about the topic. Usually you have the resident the other expert on the topic. <laughs> right. Uh, Army, uh, what is it like making friends in a new city? It's terrible, man. I'm so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I haven't um, left my house in weeks. <laughs> I've been looking at my laptop all day. I'm scared. Why won't you guys come visit me? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so first of all, I would say don't do what I did and bounce around to like five different cities. Um, huh. I think it's funny because I was talking to a friend about this the other day and he asked me, he's like, oh, that sounds really cool, man. You got to travel and stuff. And I was like, yeah, it was cool in a lot of ways. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, but the problem is it's very hard to make a close group of friends uh, when you're always moving. So you can have like a lot of uh, close acquaintances. You can meet some cool people, but you're never going to get to know them that well unless you spend a lot of time around them. So instead, the thing that's been most helpful for me, and I think just generally works best for most people, is to find groups of people who do things that you enjoy, join them, and then spend time with them. Uh, it's going to be a great use of your time because you're doing something you enjoy. You get to bond with people over some kind of shared interest. It's very time efficient because you actually, it's something you'd be doing anyway, except now you're making friends while you're doing it. And you have a reason to see that person repeatedly. I think the biggest problem uh, or the biggest mistake people make when they move to a new city is that they approach it making friends kind of like they approach getting in shape where they want to rush it and get their people and then just kind of coast for the rest of it. And really, it's something that takes time and patience. Like you just have to uh, you have to wait, like you have to get to know people. Um, I was lifting with this uh, girl yesterday and for like the first three months that I knew her, she was very um cagey and she wasn't rude she just didn't want to talk very much it was obvious she wasn't very comfortable around me <laughs> she hated um, you army <laughs> she wanted, well, yeah you were the she worst a gun to her shirt right? <laughs> <laughs> um but now like we get along really well and it's it's just that it takes time to get to know people and get comfortable around people i mean well moment, that was uh we should probably end the podcast now <laughs> <laughs> somehow, like that was much that was good enough uh, let's uh let's go on to the next one or something somehow think- somehow that was the longest period of time we did not interrupt army and we still slightly interrupted him but oh okay. i wasn't about to interrupt that shit that was like everything in everything the fucking- in the notes basically <laughs> regurgitated at us uh, okay what do you guys want to talk about now want to talk about tinder again that was fun <laughs> Yeah, dude. I mean, dude, when when you move to a new city, I mean, I've been to different cities for summers, essentially, but I imagine there's a huge feeling and I've talked to other friends about this. It's like, dude, I got to make friends now or they don't put any effort and they just kind of expect friends to fall in their lap. Right. A lot of what this is, is being proactive in the first place. Right. Because there's so many people who are kind of passive and don't do anything and they they think, oh, these plans are going to fall in my lap, or why aren't these plans falling in my lap? Why am I not invited? I'm like, dude, you got to fucking make friends first, and then you got to invite them out. You got to be proactive. You got to do things, and then yep. sort of you can build that snowball of connections coming after. I feel like it's- your average your average person within our demographic is conditioned to just 
meet friends through school and in college where it's very, very easy. Just because you see people so frequently, it, it's like you don't really have to try to make friends. When you yeah. go to a new er, new area, um, you know, for example, I mean, I'm living in the same area, but everybody's gone because it's a college town. I have to like actively create uh, a social environment with other people. Otherwise, I'm not going to run into anybody randomly and just have friends suddenly. Like yeah. today's volleyball thing. Monish <laughs> and I are playing volleyball at, at 530. I think I asked every person I came into contact with in the past week if they wanted to come play volleyball. And we got like 12 yeah. people to come. We have, nice. four, we have four random grandmas that Kevin met on the street who are coming to the volleyball <laughs> yeah. game. It's going to be great. It's going to be a, I, went, I, I, handed out, I went into the nursing home and I handed out flyers. Like, hey, guys, <laughs> we have a volleyball thing tomorrow at 530. Would love if you could come. <laughs> and then two two ladies rolled up in wheelchairs and grabbed them and said they'd see us there. What? Volleyball? What? Ali? What? what is he selling? What is this? Um. Like chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, Um. essentially, dude, one of the things that I am kind of contemplating is that now that we're in college and we're in this, again, for the 700th time, we're in this fake world, is that when we go to a city to move, it's going to be like me and Kevin were already like bitching and moaning about the fact, oh my God, friends are so hard to make in college. Dude, when you go, <laughs> when you go to the city, dude, we're going to be destroyed, man. We're going to be just dest- absolutely wrecked. Like, we'll oh, army every <laughs> night. Like, dude. Like, how are you doing this, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, like somehow we had a podcast about the first week of college, and we're like, dude, it's really hard, and it's like hard to make friends, and like, and then we're gonna, <laughs> we're, then we're gonna go to a yeah. city. Are you kidding me? I we mean, have a podcast where I'm whining about my first week of college <laughs> and how I couldn't make friends when I was living in a building with like three thousand people that wanted to make friends all the time. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, so one of the interesting things is that. Being being in a city is a fundamentally different environment than school, and there's no class on how to deal with that environment or how to deal with the city or even make friends in the first place. People don't teach you how, oh, you're on your own? How do you make friends? People don't talk about it, even though it's so fundamentally important. And, I mean, yeah. the building block of well-being sort of – is basically based in relationships, right? Mm-hmm. It's interesting because – there is a difference in the army. I want you to comment on this. There's a difference between meeting friends and then sustaining friendships, right? So there's about a million ways to meet people, essentially, right? Like, I mean, army. I know your favorite way to do this is you break into their house and then you give them chocolates. <laughs> uh, but no, he knits. He no, he leaves just, a little like knit <laughs> sweater. A little quilt. He knits inside <laughs> of their house next to them while they're sleeping, and then he just drops it next to their head and like pats them, walks away. <laughs> Yeah, actually, what I do is I smash their window, and then I just spend, like, six <laughs> hours staring at them while they sleep, and they never wake up, and then I just leave, like, one little item, like, a piece of chocolate. <laughs> so they can <laughs> find you. Yeah. <laughs> with your phone oh. number of it. With, I think he your cute a, note. He leaves a breadcrumb trail back to his apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, uh, yeah, but um, I think one of the mistakes people make, sustaining friendships especially, is, well, there are a few things. Number one, they look at friendships in terms of volume. Um, so they just try to, again, they try to rush it. They meet a bunch of people. And then they're like, oh my God, I now have 20 people or 20 new people on my contacts list who I want to hang out with. And they get worried about like setting up some elaborate party or getting a bunch of friends together for like your classic little, like, let's do a potluck at my apartment. <laughs> um, like, you know, classic uh, 30s professional stuff. When really I think it's much better to focus on like one, two, three people, get to know them really well. And then you're going to meet more people through them. Like if you really like them, they're going to have other friends who you're probably going to like too. Um, and that's, yeah, and that's what I did. Um, and so far it's working out. Uh, so the other thing too is that you should do stuff. And this is something I've become a lot more uh, strict about is you should do stuff that you would already be doing anyway or that you at least think you would enjoy. Um, so like in the past, I would, you know, like again with these meetups and stuff like that, like I don't like that stuff. Like it's, uh, for like a hackers meetup or something. It's like a bunch of programmers and then they're like, oh, we can get free alcohol and cheese crackers. Um, and like, you guys want to <laughs> hang out? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, we just lost has, all of our coding audience. Great job, no, guys. No, come back. <laughs> yeah. And like, that's cool, man, if you're into that stuff, but it's something I have about whatever comes like before zero interest in. It's, it's not who um, you are, dude. It's not who you are. I mean, there are yeah, people who, yeah. yeah. And so like, and there are other stuff like that too. Like I'm not a big, like I like to get drunk every now and then, but I don't really like this drinking for the fuck of it. 
Uh, so I don't really go to like social mixers, like cock, uh, cocktail mixers. Who you are is a crazy fitness expert who talks about <laughs> deadlifting in their sleep. What you psychopath? That's what you do, isn't it, Harvey? <laughs> when I'm not breaking into people's homes, yeah. Um, <laughs> In between quilting, breaking in people's homes, and talking about <laughs> deadlift numbers, Army has a really, really great life. <laughs> that he's okay. yeah, yeah. Be the other five minutes every day. Yeah. So honestly, like, and I, I'm, I would say I spend the majority of my time uh, either studying for class, working out, or spending time outside. Uh, and then I also like I like artsy stuff too. Um, so like art galleries and museums, movies. Um, so those are honestly like the things I spend my time on. And so I just hang out with people who like that stuff too. And it makes it so much more fun. Like you conversation is super easy because you all like the same thing. I mean, it's just, it makes it, it's like cheating for your social life. It just makes it so easy. Yeah. One of the things that is, I think a huge problem, especially with me that I faced as far as making friends is just sort of the impulse to stay inside. Right. So if you score, somewhat high on introversion, there is a huge impulse, especially for me, to stay inside and do nothing. One of the reasons my girlfriend is so great is that she gets me out of the goddamn house. She's like, hey, Monish, the sun is out and you haven't seen the sun all day. You should go see it. And then I'm like, that's a great idea. And then we, and then we go <laughs> hang out outside and I'm like, oh, I feel great now. Just recently, I was talking to Kevin about this. I was inside all day on my laptop, just working on random things as well as this podcast just a couple of days ago. And it was when I was at home just visiting my parents, but I was basically inside on my laptop all day. And I felt, first of all, I didn't get that much work done. My work, my work output was terrible. I felt extremely stressed. I was complaining to Kevin all day about it. Essentially, I'm like, dude, I feel so stressed, and oh my god, like all that stuff. And I was talking to my you girlfriend. Shut the fuck up, the entire day. <laughs> yeah, no, I was. I was talking to my girlfriend <laughs> and my mom about it, and my mom commented, "She's like, Monish, you need to move your butt, dude. You need, what are you, you are sit like like literally? I'm. I was sitting on the sofa for so long that like I made a, a giant ass print in the sofa. I, I think it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> the, it, it, the couch was warm in that on that cushion for like a." <laughs> week afterwards <laughs> i ruined my mom's couch and part of me wants to stay inside all day and work 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 but the other part of me and what i reckon to be the unconscious part of me is that going out means putting an effort and being inside means staying in a place where no one can judge you and no one can evaluate you and no one can where you don't have to interact with people, right? And I was sort of using work as a form of escapism. And I think especially as priorities shift, right? When you get older, when you get older, people stop thinking about, let's get friends, let's get drunk, we're 21. And they start thinking about, oh, well, I got to, you know, I got to get work and I got to do I got a my, job. I got a job and I got to, you know, see the That's wife good. and uh, I got to see the wife and kids and I got to make kids and, and all, all that stuff. A whole stuff. bunch of documents that need filing over in this right. region. <laughs> I got to do my taxes. Handle some situations over here, eh? Yeah. Exactly. And as people's priorities shift, right, it becomes even harder to make friends, right? I mean, the, the, the reality is 40% of the population within a five-year period moves to new places. So understanding how to make friends in a new place is a valuable skill. And at the same time, at the same time, making new friends when other people's priorities are shifted, when other people have concrete social groups, when there's less fluidity to break into those social groups in the first place is hard, dude. I mean, from what anecdotally what I've experienced, what I've heard is that there's like a 10 month period when people are in a new city and they're, they're lonely, right? They have, they have no friends. They're like, dude, I'm trying to find my social groove and they haven't found it yet. Yeah. Right? And I think I, that I can totally believe that number. And I think if you're a workaholic, it's probably more like 10 years, like, or just never, like if you just work all the time and you spend your life inside, basically your only friends are going to be your coworkers, maybe like one or two other people. And so it's funny, like I, one of the, one of my friends in New York City, she had been living there for like 12 years, had a very concrete social group. And we hung out a little bit. Um, and she was a really cool person. Uh, but like, it, it, again, it was much harder than somebody who was younger um, and hadn't been in the same spot for as long. And I think another thing, too, that another trap people fall into is the classic, like all of their friends are their old college buddies. So like they move to a new city or something and they have like three friends who they went to college with. And those are the people they hang out with. Um, and obviously that's better than nothing. But like I've met a few people who 
it, it feels like all of their friends are old people they met in school and they just haven't made any new friends. Um, so it's easy to kind of get too comfortable doing that, just like a job or something. You know, it's like we were talking with Andrew, like, oh, I'm an accountant. I've been doing that for 10 years. Like, I've known these people for 10 years. I'll never do anything else. Um, so I think, again, just back to the exercise analogy, like making friends and sustaining friends is, again, like staying in shape. Like, you can't just do it for three months and then stop. Like, well, I've hit my goals. Like, I'm going to, you know, it's something you have to continually invest in yeah. if you want to get better. Yeah. One of the weirdest findings in psychological research, and this has been random, I'm sure Army, you've heard about this, is basically the commute to work. They have found consistently and reliably that people who have longer commutes to work um, are fundamentally unhappier. And it's actually one of the big factors Mm. that basically causes people's unhappiness. I've read it in so many books now, it's kind of weird how much that's quoted and and, uh, cited as a research. Part of that also is that Dude, if you're if for people people don't just choose places that have people, they choose places for the places, right? So essentially they'll be mm. like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm basically going to get a big mansion in the middle of nowhere. It's about, you know, an hour and a half from work. I'm just going to drive every day." And in between that, not only are you losing time, right? That's valuable time you can be spending with people, right? Where you're just driving in your car. But probably if you are if you have a long commute, you also probably are away from people, right? Because yeah. work is usually where people are, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Choo- choose um, a place to live in, like Army. Army lives in the heart of San Francisco. And I'm assuming, Army, you live at least near where people are generally, right? Like like your friends are sort yeah. of close, you so, can walk to their place, right? Yeah, no, and it's funny. It's a, I think I'm a good example of this. Um, I'm So I was living down in the Mission, which is much farther away. It's like half an hour from where I am now. Um, and it's still a cool area, but it's not really, there's not as much going on. Um, so when I moved apartments because I was subleasing and the person came back, I picked a spot that was four blocks away from my gym. So it takes me about four minutes. I can literally like when I open Pandora, I listen to one song and then I'm at my gym. That's Um, awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And so I specifically did that because most of my friends were at the gym. And then it just so turns out that the acting studio where I go is like three blocks away from my apartment. So, like, it's just a perfect location um, for me. And again, I think it's important to point out, like, it's not the nicest apartment in the world. I have two roommates. Um, there are certainly things I would like to change about it. Uh, it's very hard if you want to, like, like you have no running it. water essentially, and you don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, we don't, don't have a ceiling, but I really enjoy living. <laughs> or walls, yeah. or a floor. Yeah, <laughs> <There's no> f- <laughs> there actually was a big. There was a hole in my ceiling until like recently, because um, my previous roommate ripped a hole in it because uh, he's not great at home repair. Um, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, like it's a, it's a decent apartment. But the point is, like I think in many ways, the stuff we're taught to prioritize in terms of where we live is like, oh, is like it a good lease? Like, is it um, is it well taken care of? Like, it's like all this kind of crap that yeah, it's nice to have, but it's not essential. Whereas like the location of where you live, like in proximity to where your friends are, where your work is, is much more important than mm-hmm. like, oh, are all the like walls perfectly painted? Like it doesn't matter that much. Now, Kevin, I know I know some of your parents um, or relatives are super religious, but the, the psych research on religious people is actually really interesting. Regardless of sort of the, regardless of whether or not you believe in religion as an ideology, uh, if you are religious, you are you are more likely to be happier, you're more likely to be healthier than non-religious people at all, right? And part of that, dude, mm-hmm. part of that completely is community, right? So if you are religious, go to a church, go to your, go to your local synagogue. I don't know. Like my mom, my mom and dad, they, they go to temple. You know, it's in St. Louis. It's basically if you're Hindu, uh, you go to temple. And they go maybe once a week or once every two weeks, biweekly. But everyone there knows each other. Everyone there knows yeah. each other. It's, it's the most wild thing in the world. And every single time they go, like I'm like, Mom, I had no idea you knew this person ever or this person even existed in your radar. But apparently they're striking up conversation. Plus, my mom's very gregarious and outgoing. But like, it's just every single time I go, like, hello. How are you doing? I am doing great. It is like it's like they're so happy all the time to see each other. So Hello. I think an important point to bring up is like you're listening to this, like don't like find Jesus because you will think that makes it like everything better. Um, yeah, no, that's not that's more, probably the opposite of what we're saying. Just if yeah. You, yeah. I think the important thing or it's important to point out that like if you are very religious but you spend all of your time inside, you're probably going to be just as unhappy as the person who isn't religious and does the same thing. I think it's more about 
like the community and spending time with those people. I think that's probably accounts for most of that. And then I can also yeah. see like how having a belief system that you're strongly attached to like could be reassuring, that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah. I can totally it's see the same why thing that's... as anything else that you said, Army. It's the same thing. It's it's a yeah. a place where you frequent and you see the same people continuously, continually, and you share an interest, which is the religion. So right, I think yeah. everything you said in your long speech <laughs> is uh my monologue is good good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one of the interesting things that we talked about briefly on one of the other podcasts was proximity, right? And with Facebook, social media, everyone sort of feels closer and everyone thinks that, oh, now I don't need to be close to people because, you know, I can just, you know, I'm, I'm a poke away from everyone I ever knew in my entire life, right? <laughs> but, but essentially, here's the thing, though, is that, dude, I mean, I'm sure that you felt this army. You've made groups of friends in schooling. Right. And then you guys move away just naturally, even though you're connected by Facebook and connected by social media, you still might have fallen out of touch with them. Right. It, proximity, being close to people, r- spontaneous meeting people in the street like, oh, I just ran into Bob at uh, Starbucks. We were ordering a hazelnut cappuccino. <laughs> like, no, just ra- random things like that. I-, I don't know why Bob is ordering basic white girl items, but the same, the, the, the point, <laughs> re- <laughs> the point remains, the point remains, if you're close to people, if you're in a place where people congregate, if you're repeatedly seeing people, if you're repeatedly exposing yourself to people, uh, I'm cutting that out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that was so good. All right, guys. If you want to make friends, just go outside and expose yourself to everybody. <laughs> yeah. Repeated exposure yeah. essentially is is good for facilitating relationships. And it's all about exposing yourself. But <laughs> if you're actually if you're actually making friendships and being proactive, like, hey, uh, dude, we haven't seen each other in a while. I was wondering if you wanted to grab lunch right or hey man uh it's been a while you want to just catch this movie with my friends if you're inviting people out if you're making the effort to actually do things um then you're helping the snowball of your friendships sort of uh pile up right and yeah. dude side and dude, comment yeah. side comment i i hate i hate that as a means of hanging out with people i hate like oh let's we haven't seen each other in a while let's get lunch because not one time have I ever actually wanted to go get lunch with that person. It feels like I'm – whenever I grab lunch with someone because I'm, uh, I haven't caught up with them in a while, it feels so incredibly forced. And it feels like, well, I'm getting lunch with them just so I can maintain them in my network. It's like, it's like doing work. Maintenance work yeah. of the friendship is getting lunch. So I'm curious – what like army I, I think you would have something well something good to say on this like what would you do if you had to catch up with someone like that wouldn't, wouldn't you just prefer doing something like a cool activity that you would do together anyways or something yeah dude um exactly basically you just answered <laughs> it uh i hate that stuff you like i never go on movie dates with people who i haven't seen in a while oh my god like yeah, that's dude, those are the worst um or like dinner dates uh so yeah it's like every time i want to hang out with somebody who I haven't seen in a while, I usually just invite them to do something I was doing anyway. It's like, hey, I'm going to go to this museum. Like, do you want to go with me? And, if they, and then the other great thing about that is if they say no, it's like, okay, fine, I'm still going. Like, you literally don't have to change any of your plans. Like, maybe you meet up somewhere first. It's like, it's very low investment, low risk for you. The other thing, too, is that, again, I, I really hated the whole, like, lunch date. Like, let's grab coffee. Like, yeah, like, oh, that's I the fucking by worst myself. thing ever. Yeah, like... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and then the other thing i i think is important is that a lot of people and again i've made this mistake many times is that especially with like a girl you like um but this happens with a lot of friends too is you keep asking them like hey do you want to hang out here like do you want to do this and they keep saying no like eventually you're better off just ignoring that person um like if I, i've had that happen right. a few times uh like with friends um who i knew like loosely and then you're just like okay like they're not that interested in hanging out or it's not a priority like you have, you can find other friends who will make it a priority. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, my, my one caveat to that is that I think that might be largely a factor of preference. Right. So I've actually kept oh, up oh, with, sure. I've, so, so, so if you guys don't like meeting up for lunch or coffee, that's totally valid and don't do that. Right. It's yeah. do, do I, first of all, I think your point is actually salient. The better option of the two between, Hey, you want to meet out for, you want to grab lunch and catch up versus, Hey, me and my friends are doing X, Y, and Z. Do you want to do it with us? So the latter is much better all the time, right? 
But the thing is, when you are starting from ground zero, you don't fucking have that option. So you have to start the snowball somehow, essentially, right? So yeah, I, that's course. actually something that I've done personally myself has been like, yo, dude, uh, we haven't talked in a while. Do you want to do this, right? And if it's you screw my knees, I don't like him anymore. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you do it in a way that's uh, socially coherent and you don't make it feel forced and you just kind of do it well, then you can, you can pull that off, right? But essentially, yeah. I understand that sort of the script behind that behind the act of hey you want to grab coffee or you want to do i can yeah. understand how that that social script can can cause it to feel <clears throat> forced yeah i, I would just yeah. I, w- I would warn not warn but i would back in that just because there's a forced feeling on these things even like with meetup.com even with things like that is you can break that forced script a little bit and you can maneuver totally. outside of it <clears throat> like I, I, yeah, I've, been to, I've been to meetups where i don't just go there to connect with people, I go there to make friends, right? Like you, there's no, conferences, totally. there's con- conferences, big one, right? So conferences, conferences by their nature have this huge, have this huge, like we're going to network and I'm going to meet everyone and we're right. But you can break that script and just make friends with people. Me and army yeah. went to the Teal summit, which was where we met actually. Right. And, uh, yeah. we had a really cool conversation. It was amazing going to the Teal summit because everyone there is better than me. I was like, Oh, <laughs> people would randomly be like, yeah, I sued Google for five million dollars. How are you doing? Or people will be like, Yeah, yeah. So I'm curing aging, and I got a five million dollar grant on aging. <laughs> and I'm like, Dude, who are these? Who are these people? And why I got a am I in this morning? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I had an egg McMuffin this morning. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> And but the great thing about that summit is that while, yes, you know, it can feel a little forced because everyone's just trying to make there is a social script of we got to know people to uh, improve our professional goals. At the same time, there is open space to talk. There is no loud, noisy environment like a bar. Right. Um, And I was able to break the script of, oh, I'm just going to know people to know them for their professional lives. And I just kind of like made friends and kind of just applied that sure. framework even to a forced setting. And it worked, right? I mean, Army is yeah. a connection, for, is a friend yeah. from that event. Um, that we're friends. Has, yeah, <laughs> we're friends. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Yeah, dude. No, I think you're right. I think that's a good point to make. It's just, I think what Kevin and I were saying is we don't personally like that stuff. So yeah, right, right. even though like we could probably overcome some of the force nature and of course like I've done that before right like I've gone out and grabbed coffee and had lunch and it's not like it was some horrible experience it's just it didn't go anywhere usually for me because it's Emotionally not what I like traumatic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like I, I, I go to Coffee therapy. Was I go to therapy four days a week because I had to get lunch with somebody. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's more of you have to still find something that you. It doesn't have to be like, oh, we're going to like Six Flags because that's what I love. It's more like you have to at least enjoy it on some level. Um, and I think also what I was getting at is more like people read that book. What is it like? Never eat alone. And they just like take that to the ultimate extreme. Like, oh, I'm networking because I'm meeting with somebody every day while I have my Panera like <laughs> bread bowl. Like it doesn't really work <laughs> that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, how many and, networkers uh, have you seen with Panera Bread Bowls to make that analogy? Because that was, that was on point. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's like just some little kind of hipster, like yeah, yeah, cool place to eat. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like that's the stuff I don't really like. And again, I think the Teal Summit is a good example in that I I'm kept up with a few people I met there for like a year because they were living in Austin too. Uh, but honestly, you're the one person who I've consistently kept up with. Yeah, dude. So also, I think a huge factor, right? Proximity, repeated exposure, spontaneous meetings, and also settings where you can open up, right? So I was in a New York City nightclub once, and it was loud. Everyone was yelling. We're like, oh, yeah, dude, we're having a great time. Oh, yeah, I'm having a great time, too. Everyone I went there never talked to again, basically, and barely got to know anyone there because the music was so loud that I didn't have the energy to even talk to them in the first place. I, right? I love using clubs or bars as a means of strengthening already existing relationships rather than making new ones. You know, yeah. when, you have, when you have a group of people that you actually know and are friends with already and you guys go out together to a bar or a club or whatever, whatever it may be, I think that, that functions more of bringing you closer as a group or uh, strengthening the relationships you already have. Like I meet, nobody fucking meets great friends at bars and <laughs> yeah. 
shit like I'm, I'm sure yeah. it's happened before, but that's that's not where you're gonna find your right, your right, right, right. Unless right. you're just a psychopath and you love just screaming loudly all the time, <laughs> and that's what you bond over with other people. Yeah, no, dude. So one of the huge things is that when you move to a new city, most people, most people, make all their friends before they're 25. Right. So all the friends are going to have basically for the rest of their lives and they're going to keep in contact with is before they're 25. A lot of them can stem from college. A lot of them can stem from work. But essentially, when you move to a new city, make it a priority to to make friends because it's only going to get harder and harder and harder afterward. Right. We're so fucked, dude. Yeah, when we, dude when, so, when, <laughs> once me, Monish and I go into real life. Oh, God, we're oh. done. We're, we're going to be destroyed. We're going to be like, hi, my name's Monish. And then she's going to be like, fuck off. And then she's going to go do something more important than meeting me. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy with real stuff. I don't need to meet another brown, lanky Indian guy. You're going to be like, hey, we're Monish and Kevin. Well, we're looking to make fr- No. And then they just walk away. <laughs> she's complaining. This is the seventh lanky Indian guy she's met this week. Yeah. <laughs> like, go stand the with the others. She points at a group. Of <laughs> it's like a lineup of seven Indian guys, <laughs> and she gets to pick which one is her friend. She goes um, stand I'm... with the others. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Any any last thoughts? No. <laughs> I think I said pretty much. <laughs> Army's <laughs> opening speech like covered everything. Uh, I mean, it's honestly just to sum up. It's basically like move to a new city that you like already or that you think you'll like. Um, and again, like it's nice to visit some places first. And just get a general feel for it. Like you'll learn a ton in walking around three days uh, in an area. You get an idea for which neighborhoods you like, which ones are closest to your job, that kind of thing. I think that's very important. Um, and then number two, find some social groups. Literally, one social group is enough that you can consistently hang out with that you would do already, that you would enjoy already. Whether it's dance classes or you know the gym or you know, acting classes or uh, volunteering, like find something you'll consistently show up to. Mm-hmm. Um, and then give it time. Yo, uh, thanks for listening to the show. If you're lazy as hell and you don't like taking notes and you want to support the show, uh, sign up for our email list and get a free digital copy of all of the season one breakdowns. It features all the theory and all the practical advice from season one in one place. It's like a cute little designed ebook. Um, it's, it's awesome. Also, the best next thing, tell a friend about the show. All you got to do is yell to your roommate and be like, hey, dude, listen to this brown man's podcast. Telling a friend about the show is awesome. And the more people listen to the show, the more I feel warm and fuzzy inside. Huge shout out to our production crew. Special thanks to Kevin Sanji, my main man, Army Leg, Vishali Sandarajan, Justine Brum, and Electric Mantis. This is Real Talk, signing off. Yeah, how do they and keep friends in a new city? <laughs> <laughs>